Well, we're here with uh, David Margolis from UN, United, uh, UNC Chapel Hill, and we're at the CROI, the 21st CROI here in Boston. We're hopeful uh, that we can, uh, in this program, get a little bit of a background and, and where we're headed as far as the cure research. We call it towards a cure because we're nowhere close, but we are headed down the pathway. And maybe you could give us a little background on that, David. Yeah, I, I think that's a good characterization. Being towards the cure, I think, suggests that you're on a road of uncertain length. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a lot of um, talk and presentations related to research um, leading to uh, remission of HIV disease. Um, and I, I think there's always a lot of discussion about what that means. Um, in hepatitis C, we now have treatments that can cure people. Mm -hmm. um, but that's defined by what's called the virologic remission. Um, in other words, no virus found in the blood for hepatitis virus. But that's a different virus. It's and a it's different easier, virus, it's and it works work. differently, yeah. and it's much easier to, um, to get rid of. Um, HIV has a bunch of problems or challenges that it hides in places that are difficult to get at with drugs and difficult for the immune system to see. And that sort of defines the two general approaches to eradication of infection that are being taken and talked about at this meeting. Uh, one to sort of uh, wake up the virus and sort of flush it out into the open, and then the other to bring various um, therapeutics, mostly probably immune therapeutics, although other kinds of approaches are possible, to bear on the virus when it comes out to eliminate it. Um, and um, I think probably the thing that people are going to hear most about from this meeting are the, is the story about the second baby um, that uh, is reported as cured. Um, so there was the first Mississippi baby last year um, that now 41 months later does really seem to be cured. And a second baby that was treated just a few hours after birth, even more dramatically than last year's Mississippi baby. Mm -hmm. And very initially appears to not have virus detectable but is still mm -hmm. on therapy. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know if that baby's cured. Um, and we'll learn more. And this sort of work I think is very important um, in pediatrics for um, curing infection, the possibility of curing infection in newborn children. Mm -hmm. And maybe it will in, in, inform other research in the more broader population mm -hmm. of infected adults. But, the, but the, the baby's immune system is different than an adult. The whole so situation is very different. Yeah. And so while it's a great thing and it offers hope, um, I think it shouldn't um, convince people that the cure is around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as far as um, work to eradicate infection in adults or s what some people call functional cure, which is really not eradication of infection, it's sort of inducing control without the use of the medications that we're familiar with. Um, there have been a lot of um, presentations and discussions about you know, the molecular, biological, immunological details about approaches to that. Um, and I think that it just, um, the most important thing is it um, illustrates really the much higher intense level of activity and research and investment and effort that's going into this um, mm -hmm. area. So I think that with that sort of a focused effort over a long period of time, probably many years, I think we will come eventually to the point where we have treatments that people can use and are practical and safe mm -hmm. um, that really change how we deal with HIV infection. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing to understand is that our current treatments are great, mm -hmm. they're very safe, they restore health, they can prevent infection if used in a preventive way properly. Mm -hmm. um, so on the practical level, the future hope for eradication of infection and a cure really shouldn't um, confuse anyone that 
the tools that we practically have now aren't the ones that we really need to be using today. Mm -hmm. But one thing I wanted to back up a little bit, you talked a little bit about the uh, eradicating or flushing the virus out of its spaces. And I think we've used the analogy to compartments. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think a lot of people think there's like this spot on their body. I see. When it's kind of all over the body, but it's yet a type of blood space or space where the, the virus hides. Well, the space <coughs> where, the, where HIV is easiest to find in people that are on therapy and suppressed and undetectable and healthy um, is the latently infected CD4 T cell that's circulating in the blood. And those there's, cells are very rare, um, but they're comparatively easy to collect by drawing blood mm -hmm. or taking cells from blood and studying. And that's what we do in our lab, and that's the major area that um, we focus on in our studies of people. Um, but of course, most of the cells that have virus in them aren't floating around in the blood. They're in various parts of the tissue mm -hmm. um, and organs. And so the issue with the tissue is, are we really studying and seeing all the kinds of cells that are infected in the different places? Do our treatments that we can measure the effect of treatments, whether they're a drug or a vaccine or an antibody or whatever it is, those effects are easy to measure in the blood, but are the effects as good and the same and as complete as they need to be in the tissue of the lymph nodes or in the brain or other places like that? So are we getting the antivirals to that, and are we measuring the benefit of those antivirals in those spaces? Not yeah, just antivirals, but these approaches that we were taking to yeah. attack latency or to mm -hmm. clear persistent infection. Mm -hmm. Are those approaches also, like the antivirals, getting to these places and doing the things um, we need to do? There is some assumption that the state of latency is fundamentally different in these tissues and places. Mm -hmm. And that's an assumption, and there's reason to think that might be true, but we mm -hmm. still really don't know, and we right. need to study it more. Right. Now, the blood-brain barrier is one of the more obvious places mm -hmm. that we have to cross. And, and a lot of times we think about it in terms of uh, antivirals for people to, because we think about dementia and so forth, we think that's automatically a, a given, that if you don't have it crossing the blood-brain barrier, then you're going to have more activity, more viral decay, and more problems and challenges in the, in the blood, in the brain, mm -hmm. the cerebral spinal fluid that goes to the brain and, and cerebral spinal fluid. What, what do you, um, I mean, are, do we have enough antivirals today that really address that? Uh, are they? That's an opinion. Yeah. I think we do. Okay. Um, some other people may not think so. Mm -hmm. um, there were, was a symposium by Serena Spudic earlier in the meeting to sort of overview that area. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of new actual data to directly address mm -hmm. that that's been presented, at least that I've seen so far. Um, and I think it's an open and very important question, um, a question that I think we'll learn much more about in the next coming months and years as studies are done in animal models of HIV infection, mm -hmm. in infected monkeys that have SIV, and in what's called a tool called the humanized mouse, mm -hmm. which is a um, special kind of mouse that human tissue is put into. And so in that mouse, the tissue sort of can spread to all the different places that human lymphoid mm -hmm. tissue spreads to, and the virus can go all throughout the mouse. And so we can then really study every cell in the whole organism mm -hmm. to try to address these questions. Those sorts of things are obviously not practical in a, mm -hmm. in a patient volunteer who probably doesn't want right. to allow that sort of um, right. study. Ethics and all that. Well, yeah. <laughs> sort of. I think it's natural not <laughs> to want your brain studied that intensely. Right, and, that intensely. and then uh, we have to sacrifice this one. Sacrifices <laughs> are one thing, but there is a limit. Right. But I think, I think you you're, uh, covered a lot of the territory that was mystical to some people mm -hmm. and uh, mythical. And, and one of the biggest myths, of course, is that uh, we don't, as researchers and as pharmaceutical companies, we don't want to get to a cure because we're doing so doggone good with these antivirals. Yeah. And nobody, I keep on saying there's a lot of people who are researchers who are also living with HIV or are not interested in having this disease around any longer yeah. than it has no, to No, I be. think that's another... Yeah. Um, very exciting development that we've seen just in the last few years 
um, you know, the very um, intensified effort in across a lot of um, biomedical, mm -hmm. biotech companies and drug companies um, to look into different aspects of this problem. It's almost like a Manhattan Project. I think some people have related to it that's that, but yeah. much more productive. But uh, of course, we do have the cure right around the corner, a really effective cure for the uh, hepatitis C. So right. that, as that is an example, we, you know. Uh, and I think if you think back and, you know, think what people thought about hepatitis C 10 years ago, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have predicted this. Yeah, and it were really, I think uh, uh, Ken Sherman related to it that at the end of this year, we're going to have a lot of really good options, easy treatment. And that even in, right. in four years or three or four years, we're going to have the, the treatment that everybody will just take you know, sim more simply. Right. Uh, everybody can take the same thing. They don't have to worry about different versions of viruses. Right. And so forth. But, so and it's, it's really exciting. It's an exciting. This, I think, for that reason, if no other, was an exciting meeting. But there's multiple things, little bits and pieces here in this conference that made it interesting, very right. interesting. Right. And you know, sometimes the biggest breakthroughs come at times and in ways that we don't expect. Serendipity. Um, yeah. So we'll just have mm -hmm. to see what we yeah. find. Well, thank you so much for being here. No, oh, nice to we be go here. Go back Thanks. to the conference and learn some more. Okay, take care. Thanks.